Norway is a cold country, with a very high standard of living, and they're most famous for their bearded Viking ancestors, who at a certain point in time, simply terrorized their enemies. These days, it's a job for the asthmatic biathletes at the Olympics. Norway is also famous for its supply of salmon and petroleum products, but unlike its neighbor Denmark, it is not so famous among audiophiles. Regardless of that, they still have some pretty good cards up their sleeves, and we'll be testing one of them today. Please welcome Hegel 390, arguably one of the best integrated amplifiers on the market today. Take a look at the statistics. Most audio journals and outlets around the world gave it their maximum ratings. So today we will try to figure out why exactly this device is so praised and loved. The 90s were a truly tumultuous time for us, but for a Norwegian guy named Bent Holter, it was just the beginning. He founded the Hegel Company, and he had some pretty good reasons to do it. Its principles were based on the thesis he wrote at the university, where the name of the title sounded something like, reducing harmonic distortion in amplifiers, with a high damping factor. And in this device, which we have here today and have had the pleasure to test out in many different situations, the damping factor is equal to 4000, which is just an insanely high number. To get the whole picture, let this sink in. Amplifiers made in the 80s and 70s, even the very top models of their time, had a damping factor of approximately 80, 100, or if they were lucky, 200. Nowadays, the damping factor of various models such as Bryston, Moon, and Accuphase is approximately 500, 1000, or 1500. Yet this amplifier here has all 4000, which literally blows your mind. I don't know if this is the actual number and not a made-up one, but I'll go a little bit ahead of myself and say that it sounds clean, in very high quality, and it is as smooth as possible. The design is very good. Just look at its shape, it is quite elegant and minimalistic, and it has only two knobs, a volume knob, and a source switching knob. There's also an OLED display, and it's monochrome, which means it's white and black only, but we'll get back to it later. It's quite easy to read from it, both in the dark and in daylight. Take a look at this feature. I hate it when the amplifier is in a very cramped rack. Imagine that you go on vacation and you want to turn it off, but in order to do that, you have to blindly look for the switch with your hand, like you're some kind of boomer. And while you do that, you'll definitely come across some wires, and maybe even unplug some of those, which you'll need to put back in their place as well. All because the power button is in the back. But Hegel made a brilliant move, and placed the button in the front, right under the case. It's very easy to press, but I can't help but to immediately point out that it's made of plastic. It feels quite cheap to the touch. The screen resolution is not very high, the pixels are easily visible with the naked eye, and I don't particularly love it. I'm also a little confused by these holes on the volume and source switching knobs, it seems to me that they add a slight dissonance to the overall design because they either had to be covered with something, or somehow removed altogether, and sort of hidden inside the amplifier itself. The facade is pretty well done, and the walls are thick enough, especially in the central part, so it's safe to say that there is nothing to complain about in terms of build quality. But still, the lid is a little bit too thin. A very nice color, sort of a matte black, that completely absorbs all the light. Here's the XLR connector by Nutric, which is already a familiar manufacturer to us. For instance, Nordost uses those, since they are pretty good and relatively inexpensive. The output terminals are pretty good, and I can't say that they are absolutely high-end either, but they are definitely not cheap. I think that both U-plugs and banana plugs will work great, and you can use both of these outputs to connect as many plugs as possible. There is only one balanced input. That's a shame, they could have added at least one more, in case you want to connect a CD player or some kind of network device but in this case you don't really get much of a choice. On the digital side, there are three optical inputs, a coaxial and a USB input, meaning that you can use this device as an external sound card, and a network connection input is here as well. This model doesn't have any Wi-Fi modules, but in general this is a justified decision, since this is a high-end amplifier after all, and I would generally advise against using Wi-Fi when transferring large files. There are also two pairs of analog inputs. This device can easily be integrated into a home theater, so you can use any of these inputs to do that. Let's open it up and see what's inside, to see what is responsible for the cosmically high performance. 
250 watts at 8 ohms, despite the fact that the amplifier doesn't even weigh all that much, 20 kilograms only, yet has two or three long-range transformers inside. So let's finally take a look. The bolts don't really match the amplifier since they are very small. With the current price a little bit over 5,000 pounds, let's see if it's worth it. Like I mentioned before, the metal isn't quite thick enough, even though it is very well made. It is also moderately heavy, and the device itself weighs 20 kilograms. And it's actually not so bad on the inside. It turns out that there are not two toroidal transformers, as I initially thought by looking through the cover, but three. One of them is really huge, and it is wound with high-quality copper. There is practically nothing to complain about, as it looks simply fantastic. But the other two are much smaller than their neighbor, and it is clear that the copper used for these is not so thick, but this is an understandable sacrifice. They stand on top of each other, and are about the size of a hockey puck, or maybe a little bit smaller. On the sides of our copper horseman, we see four capacitors, each with a capacity of 10,000 microfarads. These capacitors are by Audiograde, which is a fairly well-known, serious company, that produces many components for amplifiers and other similar equipment. Interestingly enough, the radiators are not very large, and on my estimate, they occupy approximately 50% of the sidewall. This tells us a few things. First of all, we don't see any active cooling systems, which is great, since it means that despite the outstanding performance, the Hegel engineers did a great job at covering their bases. The power to heat ratio is not that high, so this amplifier doesn't really need any fans, although I would like to remind you that its power is 250 watts at 8 ohms. The manufacturer says that our hero can work with two ohm speakers, and this is a very serious load for an amplifier. Not every integrated or even decently powerful amplifier can withstand such operating conditions. Unfortunately, the control unit is not shielded in any way, so there will be some interference. Another thing that I'd like to point out is that there's a wireless module from Libra, and it's called LS5B and 11S. You can see that the amplifier was assembled manually, and that each wire was folded by a real person, and not an android. So when it comes to the inside components, everything is done very well, and it is clear that it was assembled by hand, and that every element is thought out. There are a few loose wires here and there, but this is something you'll find in any Hegel model, for example the H30, which has a complete mess hidden inside the case. Let's take a look at the remote. It's heavy, and metal and it's not quite handy. I doubt that it will be easy to use in complete darkness, and I do like to listen to music with the lights off and immerse myself in the process. It's not always possible to understand right away which buttons are responsible for what, since they are very small and absolutely identical to each other. We've been testing this model out for about a month, during which time we truly studied it inside and out. We connected it to various acoustic devices as well, such as Bowers and Wilkins 803D3 and KEF R900. We also tried a model by Poke Audio, and then another by Monitor Audio, Bronze 506G. I believe that we tested this amplifier with a decent variety of methods to form an honest understanding of how it works. As for the sound, it's 250 watts per channel. It's incredibly powerful, it doesn't get overheated, and it works amazing during long listening sessions. The overall sound is very clear, and I can't help but repeat that it is incredibly, incredibly powerful. Truth be told, there is a little bit of overdone sweetness to it, and it's not the best bass in the world. But it's hard to find an actual reason to complain when it comes to this device. You can safely buy it if you are looking for a universal integrated amplifier. Functionally, this device is at a very high level, and you can add speakers or connect it to a network, and it will give you its best performance. You can also play songs via Spotify Connect or play DSD files via your computer. There is no phono stage, no Bluetooth module, and it is an obvious downside. In terms of functionality, it scores 9 points. As for the design, it scores 9 points, since it's almost perfect. But this cheap plastic button and the monochrome display, which is not of the best quality as well, lowers the score for me. Overall, you can put this device in both a high-tech and classic interior. It will look pretty good wherever you put it, like it was custom made for this exact environment. Reliability. As I said during the test, it didn't heat up all that much, and it doesn't have any active cooling system. 
Hegel is a serious brand, and so there is no reason to assume that it will ever break, but it still doesn't provide an extended warranty, unlike some other manufacturers who give a 20-year warranty on their product, so it's 9 points from me. Ergonomics. The remote control is not intuitive at all, and connecting via the network for the first time also raised certain questions, yet you can still figure out how to set it up. But it's not ideal, so it also gets 9 points. The price-quality ratio is simply unprecedented, and this device gets an unconditional 10 points from me. It's a hi-fi analog of the T-34 tank from the Great Patriotic War. Yes, it had some disadvantages, but overall it was a real weapon of victory, just like Hegel 390, which is also a proper weapon of victory. At least for many audio lovers. It'll be the equivalent of Thor's hammer, which will crush everyone and everything in its path. There will be absolutely no obstacles for this device, and no matter what speakers you connect to it, it will rock any track, and will do so as cool as possible, with high quality sound, and with the highest dynamics. And right now, the most interesting detail for me is the price in Russia. The current price tag on this beauty is $6,000. That is indeed a lot of money, but how many devices of such quality are sold cheaper here than they are in Norway? There are only one or two instances when that happened. And if you exchange these $6,000 for our money, you'll be surprised to learn that it will be more profitable to buy it in Russia. As if that wasn't good enough of a reason, you will also have an official guarantee, official support, and if God forbid something happens, you will solve the problems very quickly, although I don't think that you'll need it. Overall, I definitely recommend this amplifier for purchase. To summarize. If you're looking for a decent, natural, and powerful amplifier with a little bit of sweet sound that will fit in your interior, and that also has all the advantages of a transistor amplifier, then Hegel 390 is exactly what you're looking for.